Hi class, in starting chapter 3 you can see that the focus is going to be fractions. We have 10 lessons that we will cover in chapter 3. One kind of neat thing to uh, take a look at here as we get started, it says that almost everyone likes pizza. There are approximately 39,000 pizzerias in the U.S. serving about 3 billion pizzas every year and this amounts to about 46 slices per person per year. So hopefully each of you has eaten 46 pieces of pizza over the course of the year. Let's get started with uh, chapter 3 and lesson 3.1. In lesson 3.1 we will be looking at modeling parts of a whole. Learning targets for today we will determine equal parts of a whole and draw different representations of equal parts. Key terms to look for in lesson 3.1 are fraction, numerator, and denominator. Let's take a look at the lesson introduction for today. Did you know that the first U.S. flag had 13 stars on it? You might have seen some historic flags with the 13 stars in a circle within a field of blue, or maybe you saw the 13 stars in rows. Because there were no government guidelines about how the flag stars were to be organized in the blue field in the early days of the U.S., the placement of stars varied. Since 1776, the U.S. has grown to include 50 states, so the current flag has 50 stars. Do you remember what the 13 red and white stripes represent? Talk about that quickly with your group members before we get started. Let's take a look at problem 1 on page 96. In this chapter, you will be adding to your knowledge of fractions. As you have already learned, a fraction represents a part of a whole object, set, or unit. A fraction is written using two whole numbers separated by a bar. The number above the bar is the numerator and the number below the bar is the denominator. The denominator indicates how many parts make up the whole, while the numerator indicates how many parts are counted. If we take a look at the example at the bottom of the page, there are 10 bowling pins and three of the pins are knocked down. You can represent this situation as 3 tenths with 3 as your numerator, 10 as your denominator. You can also represent it as the number of bowling pins knocked down to the total number of bowling pins. Again, representing the numerator and denominator. If we look at the top of page 97, to get started today, the Student Bowler Association, or the SBA, is an organization of student bowlers in grades 3 through 8. Each of the SBA bowling teams consists of two student bowlers. Each team is asked to design two flags to represent the two players on the team. Each team flag must be labeled and evenly divided into thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, eighths, or twelfths. Each flag has the same dimensions as shown. Before we get started with number one, please remember that if labels are not provided, use the word unit to describe the dimensions. So to get started, take a look at number one. What I want you to do is describe the dimensions and give the total area of the flag. The flag is going to be uh, six units long and the flag is going to be four units wide to give us a total area of 24 square units. We get 24 by multiplying six times four. Team members Yvonne and Matthew each designed a flag and labeled them fourths and thirds. So here you can see Matthew's flag divided into fourths and Yvonne's flag divided into thirds. If we continue to the top of the next page, they showed their flags to team members Dante and Miko. Dante looked at the flags and said, your flags don't seem correct. Take a look at ours. So you can see that Dante has his divided up into fourths and Miko has his divided up into thirds. Ashley looked at all four flags and said, you are all correct. Each flag shows equal parts of a whole. So with understanding that, take a look at number two and I would like you to answer letter A and letter B. Make sure that for each question you are explaining why Ashley's statement is correct. If we take a look at letter A, for each part of Matthew and Dante's flag of force, they are both representing six squares out of the total 24 squares, which is going to be equivalent to one-fourth. 
The same thing is happening with letter B. Each part of Yvonne's flag and Miko's flag for thirds is representing 8 squares out of the total uh, 24 squares, which is equal to 1 third. Let's look at the top of page 99 and analyze another fractional representation. Take a look at number 3. A rectangular flag is divided into 24 equal parts and 15 of those parts are shaded. What I would like you to do is answer letter A, B, and C with your group members. For letter A, the first thing that we want to do is represent the portion of the flag that is shaded as a fraction. That is going to be 15 24 and describing what each number of the fraction represents. 15 is going to represent the number of parts that are shaded and 24 is going to represent the total number of parts in the whole flag. For letter B, yes, there are 24 total equal parts in the flag and the shaded region is representing 15 out of the 24 total parts of the flag. Everyone's representation might look a little different for letter C. Uh, this is what we have to represent 15 24 and you know that you are correct because you are going to shade 15 out of the 24 square units. At the top of page 100, fractions can be represented in different ways as long as they have the same equal number of units dividing the whole. This means the way the model of the fraction looks does not affect the value of the fraction. Now it's going to be your turn to draw different flags for each fraction that is going to be represented on the following pages. For the pages to follow, you are going to be drawing three different flags for each fraction. You need to show how you know you have equal parts by writing how many square units are in each part. And finally, you have to describe how you made your flags. Extra grids are included uh, for workspace if you need uh, any additional room. You're starting letter A with halves, and on the pages to follow, you will have thirds, fourths, sixths, eighths, and finally twelfths to finish up on page 105. If we take a look at halves for letter A, you need to make sure that you have 12 parts in each region because there are 24 equal parts in one of the grids. And of course, everyone's examples that they came up with might look a little different than the three that you see here. That's going to be the case for uh, the other pictures to follow, so just keep that in mind. You can add these to the ones that you have as well if you would like. For thirds, you need to make sure that eight parts are in each region because there are 24 equal parts in one grid. For letter C, force, you need to make sure that you have six parts in each region because there are 24 equal parts in each grid. Letter D, six, you need to make sure that you have four parts in each region because there are 24 equal parts in each grid. Letter E, eighths, you need to make sure you have three parts in each region because there are 24 equal parts in each grid. And finally, for letter F, with twelfths, you need to make sure that you have two parts in each region because there are 24 equal parts in each grid. That is going to do it for lesson 3.1 on modeling parts of a whole. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.